Researchers at UC San Francisco say they have found a way to predict Alzheimer's disease up to seven years before symptoms start to appear. So how are they doing this? By using artificial intelligence. So joining us now is Dr. Marina Sirota. She is the study's senior author. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here on Cron 4 News this afternoon. What did you think when you discovered this? Hi, thank you for having me. So this is work by a very talented graduate student in my lab, uh, MD, PhD student, Alice Tang. And we set out to figure out how to use data to better diagnose and faster diagnose Alzheimer's disease. And the type of data that we're working with here is data captured in the electronic medical record. That's pretty much everything that gets captured by a clinician when you go to the hospital, including lab test results, other diagnosis codes. And we took this information, it's all de-identified, and we applied artificial intelligence and machine learning to it. The idea behind uh, this is that AI is the science of making machines try to think like humans. Machine learning is a specific branch of AI that allows computers to learn from data. And this is exactly what we did here. We were excited to see the results and the accuracy of the model, the machine learning model that we were able to build. But we're also excited about the fact that we can understand maybe why, what are the actual features that might be associated and predictive of Alzheimer's. So the AI was able to look at all these medical records of like You'll tell me exactly how many people were in this study. And it found that there were some really common uh, illnesses, diseases that people have that then lead to them possibly getting Alzheimer's in the future. So what are those um, illnesses? Absolutely. So one very common one that came up is hyperlipidemia. And there is a really well-known link between uh, hyperlipidemia and Alzheimer's through a gene called APOE. This is the biggest risk factor for I Alzheimer's. just need to back up a second. I don't know what that yes. is. So a gene, uh, a variant in a gene uh, is um, encoded in our genetic code and predisposes somebody to a certain disease. So APOE, for instance, is a gene that predisposes, a certain variant of that gene predisposes somebody to Alzheimer's. So the then in the clinical record, the feature that we saw as associated is hyperlipidemia. That made sense. But so what were, we, the, what were the yeah. top predictors that you found that I was reading that it was high cholesterol and osteoporosis, uh, but osteoporosis only in women, that those two things you found when you looked at all the studies, that those were the two things that people had that led to this, them possibly getting Alzheimer's in the future. I mean, that's a game changer to be able to figure that out. Yeah, so the, the point here is the, what you mentioned exactly, is not only that we can look at the general population, we can look at men and women separately. Because we have data on hundreds of thousands of individuals in these electronic medical records, we can try to understand how is the disease different in men and women. Mm -hmm. And specifically in women, we identified osteoporosis as a predictive feature. But I will say it's not just osteoporosis, it's a combination of various things in the clinical record, that one was just one of the strongest ones. Yeah, it doesn't mean that if you have those things, it's not like A plus B equals C, that you'll absolutely get it. But being able to use AI in this way, not only just for figuring out you know, something about Alzheimer's, but also other diseases in the future, I mean, how do you see AI being used in, in all sorts of other diseases to be able to help people understand and maybe also try to get better treatments in the future? Absolutely, so I think a lot of it is learning from data and trying to understand how to integrate both clinical data, which is the data that we're working with here, but also molecular measures to better understand disease. That can help with both diagnostics. And now we can start looking at potential treatments. Can we affect uh, maybe some gene that's common between osteoporosis and Alzheimer's disease in women to be able to target that specifically with an intervention? And uh, it's amazing to be able to use clinical data for discovery, but also try to understand some of these biological insights by layering other information on top of that. Dr. Marino Sirota with UCSF, thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon on Cron4. Appreciate your time. Thank you.